You are weary from your travels, but mesmerized at the sight of Baldur's Gate. Not only a town of myth and legend, but also a place where one can find fame and fortune round every corner. It is night as you enter the city, and it seems strangely deserted. But you soon discover that the night holds danger as well. And in an instant, that danger is upon you. Easy pickings. Hey, Carl. Indeed. Let's see what our little ambush has won us. Halt! Who goes there? It's the watch. Let's get out of here. Yes, but take the gold. Leave the rest for the watch. Damnable thieves. They grow bolder with each passing day. Still some life in this one. <laughs> Looks like all they did was make off with some possessions. Easy, easy there. That's quite a blow you took. Those thieves that attacked made off with your possessions. But at least you're alive. They're becoming more bold with each passing day. You'd best stay off the streets after the sun sets. It's not safe out here. You could seek shelter in the Elf Song Tavern. It's close enough. Aye, more than enough cutthroats there. Could be one of them would even know how to find those that attacked you. Drawn by a haunting voice, you come to the Elf Song Tavern. It is a small place, filled with a motley assortment of patrons and grisly trophies. There, the haunting voice is all around you, and the patrons are silent as the song washes over them. One by one, they all seemed lost in its call. Beautiful song, isn't it? I've heard her sing a hundred times, and each time it still moves me. It's the spirit of an elven woman. She haunts this tavern, singing once every couple of nights. No one truly knows. Her spirit was here when I first bought this tavern. Some say she sings for a lost love, a soldier who died defending Baldur's Gate. They say she sings in the hope he will hear her voice and return home. Still, that's nothing but hearsay and tales. Welcome to the Elf Song Tavern. What can I get you? Hmm. Sounds like members of that new thieves guild I've been hearing about. You're lucky to be alive. Word is they're responsible for the murder of two city watchmen and the disappearance of several thieves from the old guild. Yes. Look, I wouldn't cross blades with those thugs if I were you. Just stay clear of them unless you want to end up dead in an alley, all right? Well, no one knows where their guild hall is. Still, if you're determined to find them, try the sewers. I'll wager they've been using them to move around Baldur's Gate. It's probably what's been driving all those sewer rats up to the surface. Well, there's a gate to the sewers in the cellar of this tavern. I locked it up a long time ago, before the Guild War began. Well, there's a problem with that. Actually, maybe we can help each other out. Well, we've had to lock up the cellar because of the horde of rats that suddenly showed up down there. Clear them out for me, and I'll give you the key to the sewer gate. And a little gold to help you get back on your feet. What do you say? The door to the cellar's locked, so you'll need to get the key from Ethan over in the corner there. Ethan's one of our regulars. He usually fetches wine from the cellar for me, but uh, he hasn't been able to go down there since the rats appeared. Only this past week. If those thieves are using the sewers to move around Baldur's Gate, they may have driven the rats out. Luck be with you, and watch those rats. 
Some of them can be vicious when back backed in a corner. At. Welcome, friend. I saw you come in. Nasty bump on the head you've got there. Something I can do for you? I do. We locked the door to the cellar once the rats started swarming around down there. Did you need it for something? Are you sure it was the rat problem? Or are you thinking of hunting down those thieves that attacked you? I overheard your conversation with Aelith. Look, friend, you've met them once and escaped with your life. Don't test your luck twice. Well, if the thieves won't keep you from going down there, maybe the rats will. All right, then. I won't say I didn't warn you. Here's the key to the cellar door. Don't be too long, or else I'll have to come down and get you. Oh, and before you go, take this dagger. It's uh, not much, but it might do you some good. You're back. Did you see Ethan down there? He, he followed you down there not long ago, and I fear he may have gotten lost in the cellar. Or worse, he may have wandered into the sewers. I tried to stop him. Thank you. Uh, but before you go, please take these coins in payment for all you've done so far. And, as promised, here's the key to the sewer gate. Be careful down there. There are bound to be worse things than sewer rats in those tunnels. What do you want? I got no coin to spare, so don't think your begging will make me part with a single copper. Oh, there's always been thieves in Baldur's Gate. This latest batch may be a bit more bloodthirsty than most, but they haven't crossed me yet. Still, I'd rather be able to part with my coins at the bar than keep them in my purse. Ah, the bartender, Aelith, cut me off two nights ago. I keep coming back, hoping she'll change her mind, but she hasn't come around yet. And with the cellars locked, I can't slip down below to get a spare bottle to tide me over. But maybe you could. Yeah, if you could find some way to get that cellar door key from old Ethan, then head down to the cellars to get me a bottle, I'd make it worth your while. Welcome, friend. If you're looking for a good blade or a sturdy shirt of chainmail, you've come to the right place. Our stock may be a bit low at the moment with the recent demand for weapons and armor, but a new shipment should be coming in soon. Well, I don't know the cause, friend, but the word is there's been some trouble between the thieves' guilds of late. No matter to me if the two groups kill each other. Never had much use for thieves myself. Now, what can I do for you? What's this you've caught? A sewer rat? Don't hurt him. Lord Xantum will wish to speak to him, and he'll need to be in the best of health. Ah, excellent. I was expecting you. Did you receive the package from Lord Xantum? Hi, I did, and I have it with me. And you know where it is bound? He told me to take it to the crypts, and place it within the Chamber of Ashes there. Excellent. The entrance you seek lies on the level below past the sewer grates. Let no one see you enter the temple and do exactly as you have been instructed. Now be on your way. I will return for the prisoner later. Guard him well. Managed to find me a bottle of Aelith's best yet? Hi, it'll do me well enough. Thank you, friend. Uh, here, have a bottle from me. No idea what the thing does, but it smells awful, and it doesn't seem to have the kick I was looking for. Yes. 
Thank the gods you're here. Any longer and I'd be sitting in some kobold's belly. Well, after I gave you the cellar door key, I felt guilty about letting you head down here without help. So I followed you down. No sooner do I get down here than I'm surrounded by those yapping kobold devils and they haul me to this cell and lock me in. There's an entrance to the sewers from the street and I use that. I knew about it from my days when I was in the guild. The old guild, not the new one. No. But I was hoping that maybe the rats would discourage you from chasing those thieves. I was worried the thieves would kill you. Retired. That life's behind me. Still, I've kept a bit of what I've learned. And it might help you now. I managed to pick this key off the chieftain you killed. I think it unlocks a gate deeper in the sewers. If you're still aiming to catch those thieves that robbed you, then you'll need it. While I was locked up here, I overheard some of the thieves from this new guild planning a mission. And that's what I heard. I don't know what that thief was carrying, but it can't have been good. If you want to stop whatever deviltry they've got planned, then you'll need to head deeper into the sewers and find that thief. All right, then. I don't need to tell you to be careful. I'll meet up with you at the Elf Song Tavern later on. Come find me when you found that thief and what he was carrying. I'll try to dig up some of my old contacts and see if they can tell me anything about these thieves that could help you out. Thanks for the rescue down in the sewers, friend. I feel like a right fool for not heeding my own advice and staying clear of that place. Here are a few coins as a way of thanks. I'm an old trinket of mine from my younger days. It's not much, but it may be of use to you. Did you find that thief who was running around in the sewers? Baseball. Thank you for finding Ethan. He told me what happened down in the sewers. Here's some coins for your trouble. And please, you're welcome to rest here anytime, no charge. <clears throat> Please, leave me be. I want no trouble. I, I've been waiting for someone, but I fear I wait in vain. My man, Kissin, had just gone on an uh, expedition into the north to a place called Battle of the Bones, where the dead still walk. He has a talent for the shadowy arts. And he had been asked to recover an item, an orb, for someone, then bring it here to Baldur's Gate. The amount of money he was being offered was more than either of us had ever seen. When I spoke to him about the expedition, however, he was acting strangely, almost dazed, as if he'd been hypnotized or charmed. He was obsessed with finding this orb for his new employer. We had agreed to meet here in the Elf Song should anything happen. But it's been almost three nights now, and I have seen no sign of him. I fear for the worst. I fear that the orb he recovered may have done something horrible to him. Well met, friend. It's good to see a new face in the Elf Song. Please, have a seat, share a drink. Uh, my name's Ipswich. And what brings you to Baldur's Gate? Ah, oh, sad tale, friend. My heart goes out to you. It seems Baldur's Gate has not been treating its visitors well of late. I, too, am a stranger here. Well, I came to pay my respects at the Shrine of Suffering, the local temple run by the priests of Ilmatter. But I came to find the temple sealed, and no one answered my summons. I had a terrible feeling that something was wrong inside, but I did not know what. <sighs> My brother's bones lie within the crypts beneath the shrine. I'd hoped to pay my respects at his grave and take back with me his medallion that had been buried with him. It was always his intention that it be passed on through our family, and now that I have a little one of my own, I wish my child to have the medallion. But now I do not know what to do, so I sit here, drink, and wait for the shrine to awake.
Have you done as I asked, Khan? Yes, my Lord Xantum. I sent one of my best men to the crypts in the temple, as you instructed. The orb must be placed within the Chamber of Ashes within the crypts. If your man fails to do this, then both of you shall answer for it. Yes, my lord. He knows your wishes, and he will not fail you. Very well. Bring me the prisoner you found in the sewers. I will question him now. Um, my lord, I, I sent for the prisoner some time ago, but I have received no word from the bugbears in the sewers. Send your men into the sewers. Find out what has happened to our soldiers and bring me the prisoner. Do not fail me in this, Khan. Yes, my lord. Should I recall the man I sent to the temple? No. If he places the orb as instructed, he will not be coming back. Tell your men to avoid the temple grounds. To enter it now is certain death. What are you doing here? Run now, before he changes you! I... I am Fayed, a priest of Ill Manor. I tend the crypts and perform burial rites here at the Shrine of Suffering. Now... Now I fear that I shall be the next one to be changed. Into the Walking Dead! Haven't you seen them? They're everywhere! My fellow brothers and sisters of the temple, all dead. I was taking an urn of ashes to one of the crypts when I discovered a strange set of tracks leading downwards. When I followed them, I found that thing, that foul orb, and the dead arose around me. Vile skeletons, zombies, unholy ground. I acted quickly, sealing this level off from the level below, then barricaded myself in this room. I had hoped sealing off this level would prevent the dead from reaching here. I was wrong. We priests of Ill Matter set up some non-lethal traps here in the crypts to capture grave robbers. The trap that sealed off the exits is triggered by three urns on this level. When these urns are taken from their pedestals, stone blocks seal off all the exits from this level. I knocked all the urns from their pedestals and then barricaded myself in here. <sighs> but I was not fast enough. Some of the dead had already entered this level, and the power of that... that... thing below seems to be able to reach even here. Fortunately, I am able to hide myself from the eyes of these undead creatures, for the time being. I can only hope that the gates and wards will prevent the dead from reaching the level above. They're coming from below, from that... that thing in the Chamber of Ashes. It's an orb. I only caught a glimpse of it, what it was doing to my fellow priests. The orb calls to their spirits, then kills them, slowly letting them die, then raising them again so they may suffer in undeath as well. It hates all of us priests. Even now, I can hear it calling, trying to draw me to it so it can kill me then raise me from the dead to perform its will. I don't know. I was delivering an urn to the lower crypts when I suddenly noticed tracks on the floor. As I am the only one who usually comes down here, I became curious and followed them. They lead to the level below. That was when I noticed a foul-smelling mist emanating from the Chamber of Ashes. When I entered the chamber, there it was, a swirling gray orb surrounded by bodies and this horrid glow. And without thinking, I ran, ran and hid. To reach the level below, you must find the three urns on this level and place them back on the proper pedestals. Then the gate to the crypts below will open. No, my place is here. I... I should help you, not run from this. If I can help you, I will. I fear a great many, 
Many on Matari from across the Sword Coast were at the shrine to pay respects to the sacrifice of Saint Solars the twice martyred when this evil struck. This evil has devoured almost all the brothers and sisters of ill matter gathered for the ceremony. Well over 200 men and women. Now zombies animated by that foul orb. The skeletons, however, seem to have been raised from the dead that lay within the crypts already. Nearly a century of dead, their bones given life once again. No, my place is here. I... You've returned. Have you destroyed the orb? Of course. It's good to see you again, friend. How fares your travels? Why... Yes! Yes, it is! Oh, thank you, friend. <laughs> thank you! I feared I would have to leave Baldur's Gate without it. Oh, thank you! Please, friend, you must accept this in gratitude for your kind act. It aided me on my travels, and perhaps it can help you now, as you have helped me. Welcome back. Something I can get for you? That's a stuffed beholder. A small version of the species, I'm told. But not that I've seen many of them. One of my regulars, Ethan, found it in the cellar. They're also called eye tyrants, if that name's any more familiar to you. Beholders are beasts that float above the ground and can cast terrible spells from their eyes. Evil things. I wouldn't want to meet one, and neither would you. Welcome back, friend. And thanks again for that re- I, I did. I'm sure there are other things lying around down there. The elf songs sheltered many thieves and cutthroats over the years. That's probably why there's that gate to the sewers down there. There's bound to be plenty of bolt holes in the cellar and the sewers. I found the beholder in one of them in a secret door behind some barrels in the far corner of the cellar. It. I feared that we were lost. Oh, Ill matter has truly sent you to us in our darkest hour. Where did this foul orb come from? Someone did this horrid act on purpose? All those deaths, who would wish us such harm? This is grave news. I appreciate all you have done for us. Please, Accept this as a small token of our temple's thanks. I will consult with our remaining priests and see if they can determine who was behind this evil act. I will send someone to you should we discover anything. Wait for a messenger at the Elf Song Tavern. We will contact you should we learn anything. Please. Leave me be. I want no trouble. I knew it. And my bones. And my heart, I knew. Thank you, stranger, for setting my mind at ease. At least I know his fate. He gave me this to hold for him until we were together again. But I have no use for it now. Here. You have it. Keep it. And hopefully it will serve you and keep you from his fate. I wouldn't spend too much time with me, stranger. Best move on, lest my misfortune attach itself to you. Surely you've heard of the thieves plaguing Baldur's Gate? Well, one of them waylaid the merchant caravan I was guarding while we were less than a league from Baldur's Gate. They came upon us in the night, slaughtered several guards, and made off with most of the caravan's goods, including a box of rare spices from Am. I was hoping that I could track down the thieves and set the matter right by at least recovering the box of spices. But since coming to the city, I've had no luck tracking down their guild. You're kind, stranger, but I fear that you'll have as little luck as I've had. 
carry my best wishes with you in any event. Friend, I have someone who wants to meet you. My associate, Jarek, here. He wanted some words with you. Don't worry, he can be trusted. We work together, him and I. It looks like your deeds are drawing some attention. That man in robes over in the corner told me he wanted to speak with you when you returned. He's been speaking with Ethan for the past few hours. Only that he wanted to speak with you. I don't think I've ever seen him in here before. Very mysterious fellow. Well met, adventurer. Ethan has told me of how you rescued him in the sewers, and I have already heard of your bravery in the Shrine of Suffering. I decided that I would see this hero for myself. I am not disappointed. I hope you shall not disappoint me. Your actions in the temple showed great courage and sacrifice. A willingness to risk your life to protect others, an admirable quality. Ethan and I are members of the Harpers, a group whose members have dedicated their lives to the safety of the realms and its people. I invite you to join us. We seek men and women of courage to band with us to protect the realms when the realms cannot protect itself. As a Harper, you will have our support. We will do what we can to help you and the realms. We are in need of your help against a grave threat to Baldur's Gate. What say you? Excellent. There's no time to waste. We need you to perform a task for us. The orb you encountered in the temple was placed there for a reason. It was intended to sow chaos, to distract the city watch in order to allow another group to operate freely. The dead man you found in the room with the orb was a thief. He was a member of a thieves' guild, a new guild that has appeared in Baldur's Gate. This guild follows the symbol of a bloody eye, and they left their mark on the bodies of two city watchmen murdered several days ago. This guild has declared war on the existing Baldur's Gate Thieves' Guild. In the past few days, many of the old guild's members have vanished. Dead, most likely. That may be asking too much. Of greatest concern to us is the rumor of powerful magic backing this guild. Perhaps a mage, or several mages. The power of the orb in the Shrine of Suffering is proof of this. Whatever the source of this new guild's strength, we would like you to infiltrate the guild and find out who or what is behind it. Excellent. Another agent of ours tracked one of the thieves to a secret guild entrance below the city. It's a secret door on the first level of the sewers in the northeast section. We have no idea how to open the door, however. It bears a special enchantment that is proof against most magics. Let me see it. Ah, yes, a curious item. It seems to bear a minor enchantment that dispels shadows, but the enchantment in the key is dormant. Perhaps its close proximity to the orb disrupted the enchantment. I may be able to awaken it. Ah, there we are. It should function as intended now. Simply bring it close to the secret door in the sewers, and the key will reveal the door and allow you to open it. Please be careful. These thieves have already killed some of the City Watch. They will not hesitate to kill you if you're discovered. What happened in the temple? Why do the priests still live? I do not know, my Lord Xantum. I have heard rumors that the orb was destroyed before it could do more than slay a few priests. By whom? I do not know for certain, my lord, but I think my thieves and I may have met the attacker on the city streets above. If they were one of your victims, how is it this creature still lives? The city watch came upon us as we were about to deal the killing blows, my lord. We were forced to flee to avoid being captured. 
Your oversight has cost us much, Khan. Gather the soldiers. Although our secret entrances still remain undetected, it's a real matter of time before the dogs of the City Watch sniff us out, and we must be prepared for them. I will see to it at once, my lord. Khan, if the creature who destroyed the orb should make its way here... It shall not come to that, my lord. I swear it. We shall see, Khan. If you fail me in this, I shall attend to the matter personally. So, you've come all this way to think I missed the chance to kill you when we first met. You speak the truth. I had not expected you to make it through the gauntlet. Still, it matters little whether you kill me or not. For either way, you will still die. Even if you kill me, my lord waits below. Your death at his hands will be a slow one compared to the mercy I will show you. So, you are the stranger that Khan spoke of. You humanoids all look alike to me, weak and fragile. Khan should have killed you when he had the chance. It is no matter. There are always others like him, small-minded and foolish, eager to take his place. You humanoids were born to be our slaves. And you will answer for those deaths. Do you think that your efforts here have saved this city? You're wrong. Our power extends far beyond these city streets. You cannot hope to stop us all. It is you who will die, and your death will be a slow one. accomplish far more than I could have hoped. Truly, the Harpers are blessed to have you among our number. You have my thanks, and the thanks of all of Baldur's Gate. These maps on the wall... Hmm. Baldur's Gate, the Sunset Mountains, the Marsh of Chalimba... It is as I feared. The evil that has risen in Baldur's Gate is only part of a greater evil. These three locations are tied. Though I know not how. Oh, this gate worries me. This beholder and his legions were able to use it to enter Baldur's Gate without being detected. It seems this gate is tied to the Sunset Mountains. A further cause for worry. We've heard strange rumors from the Sunset Mountains over the past few weeks. But the agent we sent to investigate the rumors has not returned. I now fear for his life. Please, I must ask you to head through the gate and see what has happened in the Sunset Mountains. Other creatures may have arrived there, and if so, we must know their strength before taking action. You have already accomplished much, and we are grateful. Please, here is some gold and items that may aid you on your mission. Use them wisely. I must go and tell the dukes of the city what has been discovered here. Please rest and prepare yourself before heading through the gate. There's no telling what waits on the other side. Place one. Welcome back, and congratulations on your victory over the Thieves' Guild. I think the streets will be much safer now than they ever were. Friend, it's my honor to know you. You've saved my life, and a lot more in Baldur's Gate besides. I raise my drink to you, friend. I'll bet that damn beholder didn't even know what hit him. I wouldn't spend too much time with me, stranger. Best move on. 
lest my misfortune attach itself to you. The spices! You found them! Oh, you have my thanks, stranger. Please, take this as payment. It's the least I can give you for returning the spices to me. Brother, can it be you have returned to us? I fear you have returned to us in a dark hour. This camp is all that remains of our clan. We were forced to fall back when a patrol of Dark Elves invaded our mines. Scores of us fell beneath their poison blades, and they knew when and how to strike us. We were forced to collapse all exit tunnels, save one, and regroup here on the surface. Now only a handful of us remain. Turn back from here, brother. The mines are closed, and there's nothing for you here. Getting back into the mines is the second of our troubles. Our leader, Colgrim, took the key for the mine entrance with him when he and three of our clan went to climb Burning Eye, that peak in the distance. They seek to light the signal fire atop Burning Eye and summon our brothers from Easting. Trouble is, it's been near a day and a half, and I've seen no signal fire from the top of the peak. I fear they may have been ambushed on the way there. Without the signal fire, we can expect no aid from the nearby towns. And without the key, we cannot even re-enter the mines to try and take it back from the drow. The gate to the mines was sealed with our key of Dumathon. No ordinary key. Merely touching it to our gate causes the cracks and spaces of the gate to become solid stone. Not even a battering ram could break the gate now. It keeps us from entering. But at least it keeps the drow trapped in the mines. For now. I wish you luck. And may Klongadid's twin axes bury themselves in your enemies. I saw the signal fire alight upon the slopes, and you have brought the key. But tell me, did any of the dwarves from the expedition survive? More deaths our enemies shall answer for. You have done enough, brother. No need for you to risk yourself for the clan any longer. Very well, then. I'll not argue with one with fire in the eyes such as you. Simply hold the key in your left hand as you approach the gate. Then push it into the stone door. It should melt inside, and the door will open itself. <laughs> Luck be with you. So, 
You are the one who has come to die. You will pay dearly for the deaths you have caused here today. My attack? You presume much. The Dwarven Mines were to be ours, but we care nothing for the Sunset Mountains or your filthy surface cities. Those have been promised to others, and they may have them. Can it be that you've come all this way without knowing your enemy? Then it is ignorance that has made you brave. You will soon choke on your own screams, intruder, and then I shall offer up your body to Lulf. Who are you? I... I am broken. Tell me, are you of the Harpers? I... I was their eyes in the Sunset Mountains. There was... something stirring within the mountains, organizing the gnolls, the ogres. Then the dragon appeared. I know little, but the fact that Dark Elves are working with them is a cause for worry. Whatever leads this army, it must be powerful to have such troops as allies. I heard the Drow speak often of their plans. Their goal was to exterminate the Dwarven settlement here, in order to protect the movements of the gnolls and ogres in the mountains. In exchange for their help, they were promised the mines, and all within it. I, I, though I know not why, they care nothing for the gnolls and ogres. A gate. I, I heard the drow speak of a gate, but it led to the marsh of Chilimber, not Baldur's Gate. I had been searching for the source of the troubles in the region when the drow struck the mines. If my hunch proves true, then the gate to the marsh may lie within an ice cave within the mountains. I will mark it on your map. Finding your way to it may prove to be a trick, but you should be able to reach the cave from the mining camp. Now, the cave itself is sealed with a great sheet of ice, though I think the drought priestess made mention of some horn she used to enter the cave. If these gates are the work of the creature behind these attacks, then ye must travel to the Marsh of Chilimber and find out the nature of this threat. I fear you're right, friend. I fear you're right. Well, let us squander no more time talking of it. Find the gate and take the battle to the beast that's stalking us. I was worried for you. What? News of the mines. Do the Dark Elves still hold them? Clangerton has truly blessed us this day. You have reversed our fortunes, and we shall never forget it. Have this, and with it, know you have the thanks of the Brunger clan as well. Brogan's alive! Thrice blessed are we! An ice cave, eh? I've heard something of it from Brogan before, but I didn't think it linked to our troubles. If you go searching for it, be careful. More dangerous beasts than wolves and yeti lair on this mountain. <laughs>
Peace. Peace. Show no weapons. I have no wish to fight you. I am called Slavos. I place the wall of vines upon the snaking trail of mud to herd you here to this island. No and yes. The words you hear, the words I speak, they are not the same. There are serpents in the marsh, the Skitka, that when you squeeze from them their venom, weave it into your magics. All you speak is understood by all who hear you. It is a half magic, but of great use. So I have placed it upon you. The cries of the monsters of the marsh, the words of others of my people, both will have sense to your ears. I have brought you here to ask why you have come to our lands. The Onyx Tower, is it your god? The Onyx Tower, whose surface glitters like oil upon the water. It arrives in our homeland quick, sudden, and stabs into the heart of the marsh like a poison spear. All the tribes have raised their spears to it. Their hissing has become low and weak, that of slaves. The tower has devoured the hearts of my people, all except Slavos. If you will strike the spider within the tower, then I will give you help any way that I can. Supplies, guidance, these things I may help you with. If you wish to reach the tower, you must first go to the tribes of my people. Slave us shall ungrow the walls of vines in your path, clear the way for you. Continue along the snaking trail of mud to the drowned town of humans. Now the great gathering place of the tribes of the marsh. <sighs> Beyond the drowned city is the tower. The tribes are camped in the innards of the human drowned city. To scatter them, you must break the spine of the tribes. Find our king, Sesith. Very strong, very angry but stupid, like Big Tree. He lives in Great Stone Fort in Human Town. Find him there, kill him. Cessus death, or make the tribes scatter like quarrels and snakes. Follow the drums, they will lead you to my people. Once before the great drowning, our land was the land of your people. Now, under the water, many things of your people can be found. Things of steel and magic. Slavus cannot use them, does not need them. Long ago, in the days when the sun's face was upon these lands and my people had not yet come, a king of your people claimed this land for his own. All this king sees, he claims as his. All he can touch, he says is his. He was foolish, greedy like most humans. But one day a shaman came, sat in the middle of the lands, and sees not the king, hears him not. Makes king's blood burn like fire. The king sends soldiers to make great shaman see and hear him, but the shaman turns the land against him, throws fire at warriors, turns others to rock. The shaman makes king seem like little hatchling, makes the king very angry. So king finds another shaman, sends him after the first to make the first one see and hear. Shamans have big battle, turn the land against each other, both shamans die. The land be 
becomes very angry. When land became angry, water beneath earth became angry. Water rises from water stair and swallows the warm blood kingdom. Kill your people. It was punishment. Punishment for a king that claimed to own land. No one owns land. Great break in land. Water pours up through it. Keeps the land beneath the water. Brings mists. Do not go there. Very dangerous place. You have returned. Is the marsh spoke of your coming. The mud vipers, the carrion beetles, the Haskar birds, the rost fish, all told me of you. Your first step into the marsh rippled outwards like a stone upon a pond. Ask your questions. If I have answers, I shall trade them to you. Had you kept upon the road of snaking mud, you would have stumbled upon the gathered tribes of my people. They live within the innards of one of your drowned cities. It is no place for a warm blood from beyond the marsh. Ask your questions. If I have answers, I shall trade them to you. Trestus, this is the land of my people. Sethis rules here. I will put a spear through your heart and drink blood from your skull. Your bones I shall give to the tower. You are strong. Sethis dead. Tribes without leader, their spine broken. Now tribes scatter like birds. Now road to tower is clear, but there is no gate to tower. It is not enough to reach tower. You must find a way inside. Slave us know the marsh. Hear its currents, the rushing water. The water comes from a holy place, a place of power. The sinking temple must cross rotting bog first. In temple, maybe there is way into the tower. The water stair. The water that fill marsh, that drowned the land of humans long ago, come from sinking temple. Dark place. Place of power. Water falls up from bottom of earth, falls up water stair, turn earth to mud. Water comes from Second World, where all is water, even air and earth is water. Through a door, the water pours up from the earth and spread across land. Drown all, humans die. Great break in land, water pours up through it, keeps the land beneath water, brings mists. Very dangerous place. Your strength is great. Many enemies lie dead. To attack you is to die. This is the door to the world of water. Where air, earth, all is water. Human shamans call world of water element plane. Plane of water. There is gate to element plane of water in tower. There is gate to element plane of water here. You go through this gate, come out through other. Slavos has magic. A magic that lets you breathe like fish for a short time. Let you breathe water like air. Last long enough for you to enter tower. Not to get back out. You must destroy tower from inside, then find your own way out.
You will breathe water for a short time, not for long. Swim fast. My magic will guide you within element plane. It will lead you to gate to tower. Your feet, they echo upon the flagstones. Your breath stirs the dust. Who are you who walk this hall in the flesh? In life, I was Keladon, first captain of the company of the Westering Sun. In death, I am nothing. The dead have no titles. You stand within the Hall of Remembrance. I am one of its many prisoners, all soldiers of the Westering Sun, all fallen in battle, all slain by treachery. Our spirits are shackled to the walls and shadows of this tower. We are doomed to stand, to remember, and to wait for Elrith's release, and our own. Who is Eldrin? Much time has passed, I see, for how many names to have been ground beneath time's heel. Have you not heard of Eldrith the Betrayer? The Traitress of Swords, Eldrith of the Westering Sun? That she has been forgotten is irony of a sort. Eldrith was one of the greatest generals of the Sword Coast, commander of the Company of the Westering Sun, sworn sword and defender of Baldur's Gate. She served with honor and distinction in the first and last seasons of the Sundering War, the Crescent Court Siege, and finally, the campaign against the Black Horde. In all these battles, she was victorious. Where she led, we followed. Glory drew us, loyalty kept us, and we were proud to serve beneath her banner. Our lives were hers, and our deaths were hers. I do not know when pride burrowed into her heart, but it poisoned her. It was a poison I did not see until it was too late. Eldrith had fought too many battles, achieved too many victories, and she had come to see the city of Baldur's Gate as her own. On the day of the Great Betrayal, and the last day of the campaign against the Black Horde, I left my wife within the walls of Baldur's Gate, where she would be safe, and told her I would return. She was one of the most beautiful elven maids I have ever known. There are times when I feel as if I hear her singing for me still, waiting for my return. Then I fear her spirit shall never be laid to rest while I am trapped here. My wife, to think that she suffers still, and for my sake. Our company took the field against the Horde and scattered them, even though the orcs and goblins outnumbered us five to one. Still, in the rout, almost half their forces survived and fled the field. Eldrith was determined to pursue them. The Dukes of Baldur's Gate refused. Too many good soldiers had been lost, the Dukes told us. They and the people wanted no more of blood and death and they felt the Horde would not return. Eldrith was furious. Even though we had lost many men, she felt it was better we deal a death blow to the Horde and ensure they never threaten Baldur's Gate again. And so she defied the Dukes and led us to our deaths. Already weakened, we chanced upon one of the straggling bands of the Horde and cornered them within the Dosiah's cleft it was tactical brilliance in trapping them within the canyon. But in doing so, we gave them no choice but to fight us. Backed into a corner, the Horde proved more vicious than we had anticipated. Eldrith, fearing of losing the field, sent a messenger back to Baldur's Gate for reinforcements before the Horde broke free of our trap. The reinforcements never came, and the Horde overran us. Eldrith survived. I survived. Many of the Company of the Westering Sun did not. 
Now there are many graves within the Dosias Cleft. And much of the ground there is strewn with bones of our soldiers, mixed with the orcs. Eldrith became a thing, a creature consumed by fury. Wounded, she returned to Baldur's Gate to demand an audience with the Dukes. Instead, she was met at the gates, and told that for her disobedience upon the battlefield, the walls of Baldur's Gate would be forever closed to her and the Westering Sun. Eldrith, she gathered us, all of us who remained, all of us who had sworn to serve her, and she ordered our broken company to attack the walls of her city. She swore she would take it from the Dukes, make it hers, and put the Dukes to the sword. It would be justice, she said. Justice. It was suicide. We were slain almost to the man, and we were driven from the city, hounded by the remaining troops of Baldur's Gate. We knew no rest, no peace, and they pursued us for leagues upon leagues, all the way to the marsh of Chalimber. They feared Eldrith's wrath so greatly that they were determined that she should not escape alive. I died here in the marsh of Chalimber, and so did all that remained of the company of the Western Sun. Eldrith was the last to die, brought low by crossbowmen and archers, men who feared to come within reach of her sword. Even against death, Eldrith's fury prevailed. Now she lives again, a creature of terrible power and terrible anger. In her eyes, she sees nothing but Baldur's Gate in flames. You will find her at the top of this tower, at her watch, waiting for battle. She knows you are here. She has attempted to seal you within this hall, as the stones of the Onyx Tower obey her will. But even as she is the mistress of the tower, our spirits are part of the tower as well. I shall allow the stones of this hall to part, so that you may reach her, and I pray, kill her for the last time. Pray the gods favor you. If not, then I fear no one shall be able to stop her. Eldrith's will is tied to the tower. Surely you know that when she is slain, this tower will die as well. It will fall into the elemental plane of fire and be consumed. You cannot escape this tower while she lives, and not after she is dead. Can you not use the way you entered to escape? The tower itself touches many places, other planes of existence, even creates gates to them. Perhaps there is some manner by which these gates may be used to escape. But I do not know. She is a creature of death now. Great powers are hers to command. If you go to face her, then you must be ready in both mind and body. Take your greatest weapons, arm your mightiest spells, that is all the advice I can offer you. Be careful should you choose to lock steel with her. Eldrith was one of the greatest swordsmen ever known, and hers is a murderous will. Be careful you do not approach within striking distance of her blade, or the battle shall be over for you. Still, Eldrith has given much of herself and her spirit to this tower so she could command it. Perhaps you may find strength to defeat her, by turning this link against her. If this tower is linked to her, then a blade forged from the walls of this tower and constructed on the Black Forge may be your greatest weapon. I wish that we could, but we are trapped here in this hall and cannot leave. We will pray for you, stranger. As we pray for all Baldur's Gate. May the gods watch over you. So, the dogs of Baldur's Gate once again hound me. And all the way to my sanctuary this time. 
though it lies a horizon's distance from their walls. Can it be they fear me that much? They have that much wisdom, at least. Surrender. Huh. I who have bested death. I have nothing to fear from you. Or Baldur's Gate. I served Baldur's Gate with all of my first life, only to be repaid with betrayal. They cost me a battle, the lives of my soldiers, and my reputation. Now I am but a sentence or two in a sage's book, a footnote, forever a traitor. Now you dare to invade my fortress, demand my surrender? I shall not bend my knee to you or them, ever. An eternity may die before I would ever consider showing them mercy. As I died, they shall die, alone, betrayed, and forever cursed. Then you shall die. I command this tower. I command all within it. All your small victories, all the damage you caused, can be undone. Know that as long as I stand, the war against Baldur's Gate shall continue, and I shall be victorious. You may hold the field, dog, but the day is mine. Now, let us end this. will not hold. You must leave this place. I ask your forgiveness. I let anger cloud my vision. I harmed those who had sworn to serve me. In all these things, great harm has been done. Let Baldur's Gate have its peace. I shall not rise again to challenge it. Though it will doubtless need others such as you to defend it from others that wish it harm. Now, leave me to die. This tower shall be my tomb. flash of the portal's light, Eldrith's tower was no more. Lightning rained upon the tower, and flames as if from within. And thus, in a storm of fire and lightning, Eldrith died her second death. But it was all part of a much larger design. It is done. Eldrith is undone. And her threat to us and our plans has been ended. And the harper that defeated her, killed. Now we may continue without interference, Master. Where did the portal lead? It led to a far distant land, far from Baldur's Gate, far from the Sunset Mountains, far from the Marsh of Chalimber, and far from safety. But that is a tale for another time.